Dustin Smith, Jabari for three and the win. Yeah! He got it! We are here to feel the Rocks and the Rocks Field Podcast. Coach, I'm your host, Lashar Binkley, and we are presented by the Believe Network. Make sure you go check out all that great podcasts up on the Believe Network website. And on today's show, we are going to be talking about three reasons why you should not make a major trade if you're the Houston Rockets or a major move this offseason if you're the Houston Rockets. Um, as we are winding down the season, we'll come up on the last game, which will be tomorrow in L.A. against the Los Angeles Clippers. Of course, the Rockets were able to bounce back last night uh, with a win over the Portland Trailblazers after a pretty bad loss to the Utah Jazz, who are pretty much in full-out tanking mode. They didn't play any of their major players, and the Rockets still fell by three points against the Utah Jazz. But the Rockets were able to pull out a victory last night, even though it was a struggle early as the Rockets um, start off slow again for the third straight time this year against Portland. Uh, they struggled to get anything going um, in the first quarter, but in the second quarter, they had a big second quarter to finally take the lead, and they were able to hold them off for the rest of the game. It was a bit of a scare with Jalen Green um, in the second half where he fell down, and then one of the Portland Trailblazers with their full weight fell down on his leg, and he stayed on the ground for a little bit and eventually was able to get to the bench and then back to the locker room, but he was able to come back in the game and he was able to come back in and help the Rockets get that win as he finished with 26 points, finished 10 of 20 from the field, and he did talk after the game about that injury. Are you still hopeful to make it all 82? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get there. I'm going to get treatment, and we're going to get 82. As you can see there, Jalen was saying that it was some soreness, um, that he had some trouble moving, especially with his ankle, um, but – when Jonathan Fagan did ask him, is he still planning on playing all 82 games, something he's talked about a lot recently. He said that, yes, he's going to get the treatment. He's going to do whatever he can to make sure he's playing in that last game. That is definitely a, a major accomplishment for any player, especially in today's era of players always pretty much mode management, taking games off, um, missing 15, 20 games just because they're trying to rest. That is definitely an accomplishment for any player. Um, it's something that I'm sure that he wants to you know, accomplish the end of this season, even though they didn't accomplish their major goal, which was to make the playoffs. And that kind of leads us into the main topic of today, which is should the Rockets make a major move or a major trade this upcoming off season? And like I said in the opening, I don't think they should make that uh, uh, any type of major move um, this off season. And I want to give you three reasons why. Here's the first reason I want to go with, and that's salary. Uh, of course, we all know the NBA has a salary cap on like Major League Baseball and the Rockets um, made a couple of big uh, splashes during free agency because uh, honestly, they had to. And in the NBA, they have uh, a salary floor that you have to get to at the very least. You can't be under this floor um, when you operate an NBA team. So the Rockets had to make the moves last year and they had to overpay because I like some people like to call it the suck tax, which what the Rockets have been the last few years. They've sucked the last few years. So they have to play, pay the bad tax to get any type of decent player. And that's what they did when they brought in Fred Van Vliet uh, for over 40 million. Dylan Brooks over $20 million a year. And uh, they had to pay these salaries because they had to get to a certain threshold when other salaries fell off the year before. Um, so the reason why I think that they shouldn't be making any moves. And the first reason is because of the salary cap, because right now you have a pretty good grasp on the salary cap. Yes. Fred Van Vliet is making over 40 million a year for three years, but that third year is a club option and the Rockets after next season, don't even have to pick up that third year. And that's $40 million off the books. And yes, Dylan Brooks is four years, 20 million guaranteed, but that's not a horrible contract. One thing you got to keep in mind, a lot of people are not realizing, um, in the next couple of years, there's going to be a major TV deal that the NBA is going to be working out with the different uh, carriers like ESPN, um, like TNT, where the salary caps are probably going to shoot up in the next couple of years, sort of like it did right when Golden State was trying to bring over Kevin Durant. Unfortunately, as we all know how that worked out for everybody else in the league, but that's what's going to happen here in a couple of years. So the salary cap is actually probably going to go up a lot more than where it is right now. So that's something to keep in mind when you're talking about some of these deals that are going to go beyond the next season for the Rockets, like a Dylan Brooks deal. Um, it seems like a lot now, but in a couple of years, it's going to probably be a bargain um, considering how much salary cap goes up. But again, like I was saying, Fred Van Vliet's contract is going to be coming down here. 
um, after next season, the Rockets will have that option. And it's kind of hard to say what they would do, but uh, I have to imagine at the very least, they'll be trying to restructure his deal if he does stick around to where he's not making that 40 plus million dollars a year. Because at that time, Armin Thompson is probably going to be in a position where he's going to be ready to take over that point guard position. And then you have other salaries like Jay Sean Tate's salary will be off the books after the next season. Jeff Green's contract will be off the books after the next season. Um, Jock Landale's contract is only guaranteed this season. So anytime after this season, the Rockets can cut him, even though he's playing really well. And if you consider him as a third center with Steven Adams coming back, I don't know if you necessarily want to cut him. But if you needed to, as far as if, if you want to make moves beyond, after next season, then you will have the ability to be able to cut Jock Landale. So you got to think about that. And then also think about the other younger guys that you'll have on the contract beyond next season. And I saying all that is to say, do you want to bring in, for instance, a Donovan Mitchell who will be making 35 to $40 million a season. And yes, in a couple of years, his contract will be on and he'll have a player option two years from now. And maybe he decides he doesn't want to take that player option. But then let's say you don't sign him, then you're losing him for nothing. Um, because he'll be 30 at the time his next contract comes around. So he's just an example of a player. If you're talking about trying to bring in a star level, superstar level player, you're going to be talking about 30 plus $35 million a year. And then on top of that, it's not a lot of players right now that you can think of that's really available. And not just to say that some other name may not pop up here in, in the future, but do you really want to be given a Donovan Mitchell $35, $40 million a year? And another thing to consider, um, when you're talking about making major trades is the Rockets don't, yes, Alperen Shangun, for instance, is well known around the league and he's an up and coming player and he may be able to garner you more than any other player on the Rockets team. But first off, do you want to trade an Alperen Shangun who next year is going to be making $5 million and then even the following year on qualifying op option, he's only going to be making, uh, his qualifying offer is only going to be $7 million. And probably by then, if you're planning on keeping on the Rockets, you're going to probably work out some deal with Shangun before then. But right now, I mean, that's an amazing contract. Same thing with Jalen Green. Next season, he the Rockets have a team option of $12 million. They're going to pick that up, at, obviously, and not. And I don't think they're going to be trying to sign any long-term contract right now with Jalen Green. And in the following year, even his qualifying offers will be $17 million. Um, but so do you really want to bring in a guy who you're going to have to probably tie up if you really want to keep him long-term for another four or five years when he's already in his 30s and a Donovan Mitchell? Um, for me, you have a great opportunity to work within the salary crap to where if another big time player somebody better than a Don Mitchell is ready to move you'll still have those draft picks because guess what you're trying to trade for Don Mitchell still on the contract just trading Jalen Green for Don Mitchell is not going to get it done you the Cleveland Cavaliers are going to be asking for Jalen Green plus draft picks at the very least you're going to give up a couple of those Brooklyn draft picks so do you really want to do that? Does Donovan Mitchell really make you that much better than just holding on to Jalen Green and those draft picks that you can use to make smaller moves, which I think the Rockets should do um, in the long term? That's something to keep in mind when you talk about making these major trades is it's going to hit your salary cap because if you're talking about a big time star, more than likely if they're tied into a long term contract. If they're not tied to a long term contract, they're going to have some big money come up that they're going to be asking for that you're going to have to pay or you're just going to lose that player for absolutely nothing and get nothing in return and then you're kind of just taking yourself backwards and now you've traded away one of your young guys who let's say it's Jalen Green because that's probably who it would be if you're talking about Donald Mitchell that's 20 that's a 22 year old that you just traded away who's only making 12 million dollars next season and only 17 million dollars qualifying off of the following season for a guy in Donovan Mitchell who's getting closer to a 30 and whose contract's going to be coming up soon and he's going to be making even more than the 30 plus million dollars he's making right now so that's something to keep in mind when you're talking about making a major trade um and i was kind of talking about the youth a little bit and my second reason why i don't think that the rockets should make a major move is because of the youth on the team yes we know fred van vliet is you know in his 30s dylan brooks is uh still not old but he's getting closer to 30 than he is 20. Um, so, yeah, two of your major guys are a little bit older and they're not 35, 36 years old, um, but they are getting older. But when you're really talking about the Rockets future, you're talking about the core six. You're talking about Jalen Green, who's 22 years old. You're talking about Tari Eason, who's 22 years old. Alperen Shangun is 21 years old. You're talking about Ahmed Thompson is 21 years old. Jabari Smith, even though he's been in the league now for a couple of years, he's only 20 years old. And Cam Whitmore, who's already one of the best points per minute players in the league, is only 19 years old. Think about Cam Whitmore for instance 
He's 19 years old. He's already one of the best off the bench scorers in the league. And he's only 19 years old and he was hurt for half a year. Just think about his development is going to be in the next couple of years. How amazing of a player he's going to be in the next couple of years. So if you're talking about, and this kind of ties back into the, you know, making the major trades, you're talking about that. Some other teams are probably going to be trying to get one of your younger guys like a Cam Whitmore or Tari's. And do you want to move off these guys who are under your control for the next several years? I mean, you're talking about Tari Eason, who was under your control to 2025, 2026. Same thing with Jabari Smith. Um, Cam Whitmore and Armin Thompson, are their contracts running through 2026, 27. So do you really want to move any of these guys when you have them under contract for the next several years uh, uh, with uh, amazing rookie deals that you can absolutely afford in the next few years? These guys are young. These guys, you have, and another thing you have to think about, they haven't really even had a chance to play together because Tari Eason missed majority of the season. He hasn't played since January 1st. Uh, Cam Whitmore was in and out of the line, especially early in the season. Ahmed Thompson was in and out of the line early in the season. Um, of course, we know Alperin Shangoon got injured. He only played in 62 games this season. And then you're talking about um, none of these guys have been able to play all together at the level they're playing right now. They played briefly together a little bit early in the season, but um, and Thompson wasn't nowhere where he is right now. Same thing with Captain Whitmore as far as player uh, their player development. So we have not seen all these guys on the court playing together, um, playing at the peak levels that they were playing with. And of course, again, with Alperin Shangoon, and this goes back into trading. If you're talking about trading an Alperin Shangoon because you're trying to get a star level player, well, think about Alperin Shangoon and what he did this year. He had career highs in points. He had a career high in rebounds, career high in assists. Uh, he was knocking on the door of an all-star now. That's how good of a player he was, especially up until uh, February, how good of a player he was throughout the season. And then, of course, you're talking about Jalen Green. And yes, the majority of the winning streak, Jalen Green and Alperen Shangun weren't playing together, but Jalen Green, we saw what he did for the month of March, where he was one of the top players in the league. And if it wasn't for Luka, uh, other than Anthony Davis, I don't see any other player that would have beat him out for uh, player of the month in March. And yes, he kind of fell off a little bit the last few games, but the key with Jalen Green is he's also had some good games sprinkled in with some of those subpar games that he had during the losing streak. That's the key for him. He can't go three or four games or having horrible games, have a really good game, and then have three or four more bad games. Every player is going to have bad games, maybe a game or two in a row, but you got to be consistent. you got to be able to break out of that slump and have consistently good games. You don't even have to score 30-plus points a game. Uh, maybe you'll end up doing that eventually. Maybe you can be league leader in scoring, but that's not really what you need from Jalen Green. You just need him to be consistently good, efficient from the field, not turning the ball over. And we saw Jalen Green and Alperen Shangun at the beginning of the winning streak actually be able to play together in those Phoenix games. And we saw what they're capable of doing. So you definitely want to be able to see that for another year, especially since both guys are still under rookie contracts. I know I've said that several times, but that is a major key for me when you're talking about trading away any of these younger guys to try to bring any superstar level player. Now, of course, if you're talking about a Luka Doncic or a Nikola Jokic or somebody of that ilk, maybe a top 10 player, then maybe the Rockets will you know, be more inclined to listen. But if you're talking about borderline 20, top 20, top 30 players, there's no way I'm giving up any of these young guys for one of those borderline players. I mean, we had a whole thing about Mikael Bridges and trading Jalen Green for Mikael Bridges, which to me kind of seemed like a crazy proposition to begin with. But we saw kind of how that played out throughout the rest of the season where Jalen Green was the better player than Mikael Bridges. And Mikael Bridges, maybe at some point, was a top 30 player, but he hasn't been playing like that, especially in the second half of the season. So are you really going to give away players under their rookie contract that you have full control over their rookie contracts for a top 30 ish player. I don't think that's a really good idea. And that's the reason number two, like I said, the youth is why I would not absolutely make a, a major trade this off season. Reason number three for me, when we're talking about making major trades this off season, whether you should do it or not, the reason why I wouldn't do it is something I just talked about. Jalen Green and Alper and Shangun. We have not seen them be able to play both at peak levels um, together on the court. We saw Alperen Shangun, like I said, was one of the better players in the league um, before his injury, especially up until January, February. And then we saw Jalen Green be one of the best players in the league for the month of March. Can we see them together playing that well together on the court next season? That, to me, is a big reason why 
you want to be patient you were able to win possibly if you win tomorrow uh that'll make 41 wins on a season do you want to blow all that up before you actually see all these guys on the court? Some I also talked about earlier with some of the other guys. And then you're talking about you're also adding in a Steven Adams. You're also adding in back in a Tari Eason. Um, you're also adding in another year where a player like Amin Thompson can work on his uh, outside shot throughout the uh, offseason. Another year where Cam Whitmore can work on his overall game during the offseason. Another year where Jabari Smith can continue to get stronger and you know, show his full potential at the power four position. Jalen Green, Alper, and Shane Goon have a chance to do something special, and they have a chance to do it practically at the same age under the same rookie deals, and you having that control over those rookie deals and not having to pay them unless you work out some max contract. If if they were going to work out a max contract between the two players, I think right now it would be Alper and Shane Goon. But let's say they don't work out a max contract. You're talking about you have Alper and Shangoon next year at five million and Jalen Green at twelve million. You're not you're you're not gonna find one player at seventeen million dollars a year, let alone two players with their caliber that their potential that they have, that you're not gonna be able to find that in a single player at that value anywhere in the NBA. So why in the world would you try to trade them for a top 20, 30-ish type player? Like I said. There's not a lot of top five, top 10 guys floating around that's on the NBA trade market. I don't know if you consider Donovan Mitchell a top 10 player. So there's not really anybody that's out there on the rumor mill that, you know, that you wouldn't even think about trading for. Not to say, again, that, that wouldn't change during the offseason because we know once teams start to lose in the playoffs and players get frustrated or teams realize like, hey, this player is not the guy that we thought it was going to be when they fall out, when they choke in the playoffs. Maybe a player becomes available. But right now, I just don't see a world where you would want to trade any of the young guys, especially the two guys that have been talking about the most as far as trades and Jalen Green and Alper and Shangoon. I just don't see a, a point in moving either one of those players. I say you ride it out. You let Emei Doko uh, have another year with all these guys. We saw what he was able to do with a team where their best bench player, Atari Eason, was out pretty much majority of the year. Uh, their best... Uh, overall player, Alper and Shangun was out, uh, missed the last two months of the season. Jalen Green struggled for most of the season, and the Rockets were still, they still have a chance to be a 500 team by the end of the year. Something I guarantee 95% of people, even Rockets fans, did not think that was possible. I admit, at the beginning of the year, I said high level 35 wins, and that it may be 35 to 40 if everything goes perfect, which it hasn't this year. It has not gone perfectly for the Rockets. I said around 35 wins for the season, so even my projection was low. So, yes, it was a disappointment that the Rockets are not going to make the play in, that they had a chance, and then they just couldn't come up against the better teams in the league in the Golden States and the Minnesotas and the Dallas Mavericks of the world. But if you take a look at the big picture, which I'm a big picture guy, I'm not a kind of stuck in the moment, um, person of the moment type guy. If you look at the big picture, the Rockets absolutely surpassed most people's expectations this season by winning 40 or 41 games, depending on how tomorrow goes. To be able to win those amount of games with the amount of injuries they have, with a brand new coach, with a brand new system, players struggling, all the injuries they had, to still be able to win 40 41 games is pretty amazing. If you look at it this way, if the Rockets were in the East, they'll be in the ninth seed, and they'll be going up against a Chicago or Atlanta in the play in. And if you're going to tell me that you don't think the Rockets will have a chance against either one of those teams at home, I think I would say you were crazy. So if you look at it that way, if they were in the East, they would be comfortably in the play in, and they probably be making the playoffs, or at the very least, begin to the second round of the play in, because I would take them over Chicago or Atlanta. Um, in the Eastern Conference, but unfortunately, they're not in the East Conference. They're in the tough Western Conference, which I've never seen uh, tougher at any other point in, throughout my time watching basketball. I mean, if you look at the top three seeds, they're they're all tied with one game left. That tells you how tough the West is. So that's my top three reason why I don't think the Rockets should make any major moves this offseason. Also, I didn't even mention you got to throw in the fact that the Rockets will have a top 10 pick in the Brooklyn pick that they can use to make a more minor trade. Because to me, real quickly, to me, what you should do is you should possibly look at bringing in a couple of smaller deals. Because the Rockets, number one thing the Rockets absolutely need is shooting. The Rockets do not have enough shooting. They're one of the worst three-point shooting teams in the league. They absolutely need shooting around Apper and Shangun when he does come back next season. To me, 
you take that top 10 pick, you try to move it and you try to go out there and get some some shooters that will absolutely help your team in the long run because that's absolutely the number one priority for the Rockets this offseason is shooting. Yes, some players on their team can improve when it comes to shooting. Yes, you're bringing back Tarisa, who was one of the Rockets' better shooters in the league, but ultimately you're going to need to bring in some shooters and you'll have that top 10 pick along with some other picks that you already have to be able to possibly bring in another player um, and then you also have salary fillers, like I said, with Jay Sean Tate salary you can use. You can use Jeff Green's salary um, if you don't plan on bringing back Jeff Green. So you have some avenues to bring in some smaller deals and bring in more depth that you will definitely need as far as shooting. And then the other thing that you definitely need is some more depth is, is to me, you need more wing defense, even though you are bringing back Tari's, like I said earlier, a uh, point of uh, – a problem that a lot of people thought the Rockets had before we saw Jock Landell kind of resurrect this season was at the center position, backup center position. But now I don't think that's a problem. Napper and Shangoon to be coming back. Steven Allen should be ready by training camp. And then you've seen what Jock Landell's been able to do last month. And that's going to probably be your third center. So you have the depth at center now. To me, I just think you need more depth behind the power four position because Tari Eason is a power four, but he also plays kind of small four positions. So just bringing in more depth overall, I think that will help the Rockets. And to me, you don't need to make a major trade to do that. You can make a small, smaller deals and they can have huge impacts in the long run. So that's my top three reasons why I don't think the Rockets should make any major moves this offseason. Let me know down in the comments. Do you think the Rockets should make any major trades? And if you do think the Rockets should make some major trades, who do you think the Rockets should be bringing in? And also let me know uh, down in the comments, uh, what do you think? Do you think that uh, the Rockets um exceeding expectations this year did you expect the rockets to win 40 41 games this season what was your prediction at the beginning of the year and let me know that down in the comments as usual appreciate the support it's been a great year there's no more home games so we won't be at any more games this year bringing any more pre or post game comments but we definitely will be out during this summer because the rockets will be opening up their new practice facility slash training facility this off season so we'll definitely be out to bring y'all the pictures and all the video of that uh, the Rockets should be having exit interviews at the very least for Phil Stone and uh, uh, M.A. Uh, should have uh, some exit interviews. I don't know about any of the players, but either way, we'll be out bringing you that. So any special events that happen this offseason, any, if they do make any trades and they have any pros game, we will be there and we will be bringing you all that coverage. And again, we appreciate our support. We made it to 2,000 subscribers in less than a year. And we want I definitely want to thank you all for that because it's been a great year. Um, we have definitely uh, grown as a channel a lot faster than I thought we would. So we definitely appreciate the support and make sure you check out the next episode of Rocket Fuel Podcast.